Listen to this. Hopefully that's the last cop we see in a minute because I'm about to go. Bullshit if you suck. Some bull. What's up, what's up boys and girls, how's it going? It's Cody here with the End Up Media. You already know, I'm not exactly positive where I'm going today. So first thing, I've actually had this bike for, you know, a couple weeks now. The first videos I made, I was talking about what it's like to start out on a 600, which is pretty cool. I mean, I was pretty scared at first. Not like scared, but I was pretty nervous, you know. I knew I could handle it or I wouldn't have done it. But I waited long enough to where I knew I'd be comfortable. I already knew like the concept of riding bikes and stuff. I already I already had the the concept of everything down. I already knew how to drive on the roads. I mean it's it's a lot different uh, driving a car versus riding a bike on the streets. You gotta be a lot more careful and cautious and stuff. Uh, but I had I had the majority of that stuff already planted in my head. Uh, but I wanted to talk about, you know, am I am I glad that I waited that long or like do I feel like I should have hopped on a bike a lot sooner? Or do I feel like I never should have or you know whatever. Uh, so first of all, yeah, I'm 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 really glad that I actually waited that long uh, because I mean this thing is <laughs> oh this this thing is tempting, you know. Sometimes you just want to get up and go. And and there's no limitations on this throttle. Like you can you can get up and go. Uh, so if I was younger, uh, I probably wouldn't have had very many limits. Which, which means, yeah, I'm, re I'm really glad that I did wait because I, I know I just wasn't responsible enough before. I knew that I just wouldn't make the right choices. I'm glad that I waited until I was 24 to get a bike, especially a 600. If I was going to start out on a bike any younger, I feel like I could have started out on a 300 or a 250 and I would have been just fine. But since I waited until I was a little bit more matured, uh, I'm glad that I did start out on this bike. Um, I need to stop saying uh so much. Um, um, uh, um, um, I just, I just, yeah, yeah. I still got the rest of my life to ride, so I'm glad that I waited a little bit. Uh, so other than that, uh, being more comfortable with the bike, it does, it does give you a lot of temptations to go pretty fast and whatnot. I actually have a leaky fork seal now, uh, so I'm gonna be doing doing my fork seals here in a day or two. I'm gonna also be doing all my brakes, uh, brake pads, rotors, and I also ordered a chain and sprocket kit, which should be here uh, tomorrow, actually. So, yeah, I'm gonna be doing all that stuff. I'm not sure if I'm gonna film any of it yet or not. But I'm pretty glad that I'm doing that. My chain and sprocket kit, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, basically I'm doing it for wheelies. I haven't been doing any wheelies yet. But I'm, I'm doing it set up for wheelies. There's a the cops right there. So down two in the front, up five in the back. Should be pretty cool. That's the last cop we see in a minute because I'm about to go. <laughs> I'm just playing. I really want to 
keep making these videos. I know I've been uh, waiting a little bit to get more used to the bike and stuff, so that we could do some more moto vlogs. Uh, but yeah, I'm, pre I'm pretty uh, comfortable with the bike now. Not like professional, obviously. Still, only had the bike for a couple weeks, but I've been riding it to work almost every day, and just basically everywhere I go, I've been riding it. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't, I can't talk myself into driving the truck anymore. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty glad I finally felt mature and ready to get my bike. So, do I still think that you guys could start out on a 600? Absolutely. Like, like I said before, I, I really feel like all that really stops you is if you think you're responsible enough to keep yourself in the right position. I don't think you guys should be going that fast, uh, messing yourself up. Because you could really, you could really mess yourself up. I think I'm gonna take you guys for a ride down uh, Marine Drive. Let's go down Marine Drive. See what all the hype's about. So when I was thinking about buying a bike, I was debating between a street bike or a dirt bike. And so if you guys have that in your head, on if you want to get a dirt bike or a street bike, there's two different kinds of people. Uh, there's those people that just really don't want to ride on the street because they know how stupid other drivers are. So if that's you, then you know, go with the dirt bike. If you're gonna sell your street bike in a week anyways just to get a dirt bike, there's no point in actually buying a street bike. But for me, I am so glad that I actually did buy a street bike because I can just ride it wherever I wanna go. I'm free. I feel so free on this bike. Like more free than I've ever felt in my life on this bike. I mean, this is, this is where it comes into play of being responsible or not because you have so much freedom on this bike that you can just go in between cars, you can go around cars, you can go through traffic, and there's nothing stopping you. And even if the cops were to get behind you, you can just go. Like, that's why when you're watching the videos, all the people that get pulled over, the cops are always like, oh, normally they just run. And it's because it's just so easy after you're used to your bike to just dip out. Yeah, right. You got stuck behind one, not gonna get stuck behind two. Um, so yeah, I, I was really debating if I should get a dirt bike or a street bike, and I just could not decide for the longest time. So I had it, I had them both in my mind. Uh, I was also thinking like, whoa, I could just get a supermoto, and then I have the best of both worlds. But honestly, it would be sweet to have a supermoto and to be able to go back in the streets, you know. But I really did not want to mess with all that. I really did not want to. Uh, I really didn't want to be swapping the tires every time I wanted to ride on the dirt, you know. So I'm pretty glad that I actually ended up with a street bike because then I could just get a designated dirt bike. And then someday, yeah, I really do want a supermoto for the streets because, because why wouldn't I? They're sick. But uh, for the dirt, I'll probably get a YZ250F uh, and then I'll probably upgrade that to a YZ450F. I'm not exactly positive on that yet. I might just I might just go straight into the 450. But I'm also thinking that, you know, if I want to actually start racing on the track, then I'll probably just want a 250. So I'm not 100% positive which one I want yet. I'll probably honestly start out with a 250 just to get, get used to it on the track, which will be pretty cool either way. And then someday, for my supermoto, I really want like a Husqvarna, like a 7, 701 or whatever they are, because I, I just really like them. They're sick. 
Everybody always talks about how, how much different they are, so I really want to give that a shot. So yeah, uh, basically the two different bikes that I would actually want is uh, obviously Yamaha and Husqvarna. Uh, but if I actually, if I really get into stunning, uh, which I've been thinking about, I'm not. I haven't really decided if I want to get a stunt cage for this bike and get this one all built up into that, which I probably will end up doing, uh, or if I just want to spend, you know, 2,500 to three grand on like a Grom, which would be the only Honda I would ever buy. Uh, Groms are pretty sweet. Maybe one of the Kawasaki's. I'm not sure yet. But either way, one of those would be pretty cool. Look at this view, guys. You guys ever rode right next to the river like this? Probably. I don't know. I feel. I just feel so lucky that this is my home right here. I could walk right, right up to this river from my house, which kind of sucks that we got all the, all the buildings right next to me. But you know, someday I'll move out to, uh, to the country. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really glad that I got this 600 street bike. I, I couldn't imagine if I got anything else and avoided getting this any longer because I'm just I'm just so happy that I actually got this. Uh, now that I'm actually getting comfortable with it, I'm thinking about uh, one of these weekends going down to the lots uh, down to Mexico and doing some some wheelies. I haven't 100% thought about that yet. I mean, I've always been into wheelies, but I mean, this is this is my baby right here, and I really don't want to mess her up. Uh, but I guess we'll see how she rides after I get my training sprocket kit on, and we'll, we'll see. Uh, but I'll definitely have you guys on my head when I start learning those, uh, so you guys can see the, my process of going through it, if I, if I lay it over, or when I lay it over, I guess. These speed cameras are stupid, man. Stupid watch. They got they got that, and then not even a mile later they got this. You see that? Fucking bullshit. Some bullshit. You suck a dick. Some bullshit. It's a free country, motherfucker. Let me go fast. If I want to go fast, it's my own life I'm endangering. Let me pay my own consequences. I took my girlfriend on the back the other day. She wasn't sure how she felt about riding with me. She felt a little insecure, but I guess by the end of the ride, she was feeling a lot more comfortable. She was saying like <laughs> it scared her when I went fast, but I didn't even get over 70, honestly. Uh, the acceleration kind of scared her a little bit, but she said she was still comfortable. She felt comfortable with it, which is good really good I don't think my bike liked it though it's lowered it was making a lot of noises so I decided that I'm just not gonna do that no more uh, if she wants to ride then we'll just get her a bike which would be pretty sweet listen to this yeah what's good that's my hip right there uh, so this summer we're probably gonna be out camping on these uh, islands let me know if you guys want me to bring you along we're gonna have some jet skis out, have a good time. If you guys wanna come with us, just let me know. Uh, I probably won't talk to you guys very much, I'll just make like a little edit, because I don't I don't do the whole selfie talking thing. But. So if you guys got any questions about how, how this last week's been, feel free to comment them down below. Uh, I'll, I'll be sure to answer them for you. Uh, I wanted to actually give a shout out to uh, one of my subscribers that's been commenting on a lot of my stuff lately, liking all my videos and stuff. Uh, so I wanted to shout out to Nick Scoots. Uh, I really appreciate you actually doing that, going out of your way to watch all my videos and stuff. I'm not actually sure if you watch these moto vlogs, but if you are, then shout out to you. I put 350 miles on this bike already. I actually didn't start that until after the first time I got gas. So it's probably about you know 370 or so. I think I put about 20 miles or so before I did that. Maybe maybe 50, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm just just about 350 miles I've already put on the bike. 
so that's about 350 miles that I've ridden a motorcycle on the street feels good to be comfortable with the bike now to where I can actually downshift properly and all that good stuff look at these houses these houses are all on the water look at that they're floating I actually have a buddy that lives in one of those Baby, maybe I was just a couple of months My faggot father must have had his panties up in a bunch Cause he split I wonder if he even kissed me goodbye Now I don't on second thought I just fucking wish you would die I look at Haley And I couldn't picture leaving his side Even if I hated Kim I grit my teeth and I try to make it work with her At least for Haley's sake I maybe made some mistakes But I'm only human But I'm man enough to face him today What I did was stupid No doubt it was dumb The smartest shit I did was Take the bullets out of that gun Cause I'd have killed him Shit I would have shot him and them both in my life Like to welcome y'all to the Eminem show I'm sorry mama I never meant to hurt you I never meant to make you cry But tonight I'm cleaning out my closet Sorry mama I don't know what to talk about I think we covered all of our topics, but I think we got something else. Yo, yo, what's good? So, where are we gonna go? What are we gonna do? Do we got plans? We got plans. What's good? So, the other day, I filled out an application at work to uh, raise my position. I might be hopping off the forklift and getting into a truck, I'm driving a truck. I'm pretty skeptical about it. I don't know, it might be too good to be true. Uh, I guess there's only one way to find out though. I'll talk with my boss and see if he thinks it's a smart idea or not. I mean, he probably won't be very happy that I'd be leaving, but he's pretty cool. He just wants what's best for us, so. Uh, I got offered the position. Uh, they said that I'll get paid between $1,500 and $2,500 a week. Which sounds pretty cool. Then we can buy our house. We can buy some toys. We can buy a new truck. It should be pretty sweet. Friend said that she would rather have a dirt bike than a street bike. She said she wants both, but she wants a dirt bike first. Which I don't see any problem with that. I'll probably buy a YZ250F for both of us to ride. And then when I get my 450, we'll call it hers. The 250, I mean, not the 450. We'll call the we'll call the 250 hers. The 450 mine. Um, unless I really like the 250 on the track. Uh, then I'll just get another 250 and uh, then we're good to go. I haven't talked about this yet and I kind of forgot to add it into my other thing. Uh, all the things that are changing, all the things that are looking up for me, I completely didn't even think about this. Uh, so one of the things that has changed in my, in my life is I'm becoming a lot healthier. Uh, I mean, maybe not 100%. But I've been watching what I eat more. I've been eating a lot more salads and greens and instead of just like freaking snacks. But I've been eating a lot more greens and stuff. And if you don't know me, you probably didn't didn't even know that I was a vapor. I know a whole bunch of you guys like, oh what a fucking faggot. But yeah, I used to vape. I never actually smoked. Um, I might have like took a drag off somebody's cigarette before, but I never I was never a smoker. Uh, my vaping came from uh, hookah. I started smoking hookah, and I was like, oh, you know, you can get one of these vapes and you can take the hookah around with you. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I still, I stopped because I just didn't want the kids to see me doing that and think that it's cool. I stopped vaping 2018. On New Year's, I stopped. Basically, I didn't like 100% stop, but I, I gave away my stuff to my cousin. 
I just decided I just wasn't gonna buy anymore. So I figured that that's a good way to stop. Every once in a while, you know, if we're hanging out with friends and uh, somebody brings a vape, I, I might hit it once or twice. But I don't have that addiction to where I just need to go buy one or I need to go buy some juice or anything like that. So I feel I feel really comfortable with the quit. Uh, I mean, it's it's been three months and I haven't really had any problems. I actually forget that I even vaped half the time. That's why I didn't even add it into that thing. So that's pretty cool. I'm not quitting because I feel like it's dangerous or I feel like it's worse than smoking or it's gonna give me cancer or anything like that. Uh, I still, I still believe that it's a way better alternative to smoking. I feel like you shouldn't need anything, which is basically the reason why I'm, I'm quitting, uh, or I quit. I don't feel like you need anything besides you know, your food and water uh, going into your system. I believe that you can do whatever you want, you can drink. I barely ever drink too, you know, when we go out every once in a while, I'll drink a few beers. But I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm not a smoker, I don't smoke weed. I never smoked weed before it was legalized in my, in my state. When it was legalized, I tried it a couple times, and then I put it down. That was no problem putting that down. Um, I vaped for probably a good five or six years before I put that down, and I didn't really have any problems putting it down. Uh, once you tell yourself that you really just don't want to pay for it anymore, that's basically the end of the story. Um, and I didn't, I didn't tell myself I'm never gonna vape again. I didn't tell myself that I'm never gonna uh, use somebody's vape. So that's that's good for me. Is I don't have that pressure of oh my god, I, I can't, I can't vape anymore. So if my buddy's like, hey, you want to hit off my vape? I'm not gonna be like, oh no, nah, bro, I don't, I don't, I quit. You know, I mean, I don't. It's not gonna get me. It's not gonna get me to go buy another one. Uh, never had the urge to be smoking weed or anything like that. I mean, it's not bad. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's bad. And that's that's basically where all that's that's gone for me. Uh, I've always been into into motorcycles and bikes, and you know that's that's my my addiction. I I feel like. I feel like you can only have like so many addictions and since all my addictions seem to have wheels I don't think there's enough room in my addiction book for any drugs which is why I'm getting my kids so much into into bikes and scooters because I'm just I just hope that he'll be more addicted to all of that stuff that he, he will also feel the same way about drugs as me as maybe he'll he'll go off someday when he's when he's an older adult old enough to make those decisions and decide that he doesn't he doesn't want to do that and it won't be me telling him that he can't you know I don't want I don't want to scare my kids I want them to come to me for things and ask me about things I want him to be uh, comfortable telling me what he's done or what he's planning so that I can you know basically tell him what my story is about that or why I did or didn't want to do that or did or didn't do that anymore um, I feel like that's just the more comfortable way to do it I don't want him to be scared of me and not tell me and hide things from me and sneaky and that's just that's I mean I was like that a lot as a kid I was like I don't want to tell my my parents anything because I'm scared of what they're gonna say or do or whatever uh, but I feel like he if, he, if we get set him up on dirt bikes and and street bikes and scooters and all that fun stuff maybe he'll pick one that he really likes maybe he'll just get into like a soccer or uh, basketball or whatever I mean I'm not gonna hold him to to the things that I like I want him to try everything that he wants I want him to try all the fun stuff that he might really get hooked on and I want him to take whatever it is all the way until the end and I want him to him every single thing he do does to think of himself as the next champion if he hops on his bike he hops his leg over his bike I want him to think that he's gonna be the next X Games champion or if he starts uh, dribbling a basketball I want him to think that he's the next NCAA and I think 
that's where we're gonna get him to stay on the straight and narrow. Not to try to push him through school, which I mean, it might be good if he goes to college. I'm not gonna push it on him. I'm gonna, basically, if he wants to learn those things, or if he actually wants to be one of those things for the rest of his life, then he can definitely try that or push that. But I don't, I don't think that we should be pushing that on him. Like, oh, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or a scientist. Which, I mean, those are all good things. But I want him to, I want him to have a good life. I want him to really be able to, you know, never have to have an ordinary job. Maybe when he's in school, uh, maybe when he's like young, like 18 or so, have a, a job like that. But hopefully by the time he's 18 or so, he'll already be professional at what he's doing and be making money with that. I, I really hope that he he's good to what he wants and really figures out what what he loves so that he can he can push to be the best and I know he will be and that should be pretty cool. So yeah, I guess that's my take on parenting. Uh, everybody has different ways of parenting, different thoughts, but that's how I do it. I don't, I don't want him to be scared of me. I want him to look up to me and all that stuff. So that's why we, we pretty much spoil him. Uh, but when he gets a little bit older, you know, when he when he's old, older than four, which he's only four right now, but when he gets old enough, I really want to push on him that he needs to work for what he gets, like chores or making money somehow, uh, so that he's not just being a spoiled and, you know, getting everything he wants just because he wants it. Uh, because that's a big thing for me. I grew up with nothing and I had to work for everything that I got. I never I never could just ask and be like, oh, I want this. Like even a bicycle, I, I couldn't just ask for a bicycle. Nobody would give me a bicycle. I had to work for it. I had to, I had to figure out how I was gonna make the money to get that bicycle. Uh, the dirt bike, even bigger picture, you know, I'm, I'm a 10 year old kid and I want a dirt bike. How the heck am I supposed to get a dirt bike? You know, it's impossible. So I guess, that was pretty complicated. It took me a really long time. And I don't want him to have to, you know, work for three or four or five years just to get a dirt bike. I just want him to get the concept of that he has to really, he has to really want it. And he has to really prove that he wants it. And if he, he can prove that he really wants it and he, he puts in his work, um, I'll, I'll help him get it, I'll help him to, you know, pay for it as long as he really shows that he's, he's working for it. And then when he works for it hard enough, then he can just, he can, he can get it, but he'll, he'll, might still have to like work for it, uh, know that he's still making payments or whatever until, until it's all paid off or something similar to that. So, I'm gonna end that video here. I'm not exactly sure how many topics I covered. I feel like it's been a pretty good vlog. I feel like I could talk to you guys a little bit. Uh, but I'm gonna end it here. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week or weekend or whatever it is. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, show your buddies. I guess I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.